Hi, my name is Ben Goodman and I'm Goodman's Barber Shop in Hastings, UK. Today, I'm going to show you how I would do a beard trim in my shop. All good? Yeah. So, first things first, I'm going to comb out the beard to see how long it actually sits on the client's face to pull out any stragglers. And then after that, I'm going to apply some upcut deluxe pomade and blow dry it out to get the true length and give it a lot more strength and hold for when we're sculpting and shaping the beard up. Next, I'm going to um, dampen the beard down with water and then blow dry out with the quiff roller, like a pea size amount, really. And I'll spread that through my palms, my hands. And then apply that through the beard, right from the start to the end. The beard is more set with the product in it. So it's gonna make it a lot easier cutting it with the clippers and getting a cleaner line on the shape of the beard. So have a feel of it, man. Touch his face. Like it feels strong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's got loads of product in there. No. So the first thing I'm gonna do now, where we've previously cut his hair, I'm gonna do a taper from the beard back to the hair. Fletcher's beard fade, we normally take it quite low to enhance the shape of it here. So I normally use the ear as like a, like a measuring stick to, to work out where the fade's gonna be on the beard. Just before the bottom, bottom of the earlobe starts there. And whilst I'm here, I'll, I'll clean up this edge here. That's just habit for me. Like when I'm working on one side, I like to clean up the excess and then I'll move around to the other side and do the same process really. Exactly same as the other side. I'll just clean this line up whilst I'm working around. Yeah, using the, or the uh, structure of the jaw, I will come straight down. Depending though, some people do like it flared out a bit more, but I won't, I won't try to bring it in too much because the regrowth on that isn't going to look the best in a few days. I try and keep it as natural as possible, but also want, want the client to walk out looking, looking sharp when it's done. So. So next, what I'm going to do, the air I've already taken out with my trimmers, I'm going to foil that down to the skin. So I'm just going to fade the top of the beard in. I'm going to start with a longer grade, focus on that part where the longest part of the beard is, and then fade it right down to where it's down to skin there. So I'm just bringing it out a bit, rather than going too far in, because obviously you're going to create more of a weight line for yourself. So I'm going to flick it to a one and a half. Just lightly bringing out that next area. Into a one. Then I'll flick it to a half. Down to 0.25. Basically working right down back to the skin again. Just picking out any little bits so I can see at the moment. I'll always go back and refine just at the end as well. Because this beard is quite wavy like that. Actually grain in the hair grows in different ways so sometimes it's, it's easier to go at different angles to achieve that blend on it. Just going to knock off any odd ones here in preparation for lining that up later. Save yourself a bit of time working on this area before you move to the next side. Now we're going to do the same, but on this side. Starting with a longer guard. Down to one and a half. I think, it, I think doing beard trims though is a bit more, I don't know, like, it mixes the job up, job up a bit, it makes it a bit more exciting sometimes than just doing just haircuts. Because yeah. you've really got to sculpt it. Some beards can be really testing as well. Like some are coarser than the other, straighter, wavier. I'd say predominantly with a longer beard like this, it's either, I'll put people ask for it square or more rounded, or some people like, well, kind of like the Spartan look. Or even some people have even lower fades in this, and it becomes like, 
in a way, like a longer goatee, but some people like it really tight to the face. So like when the, the regrowth isn't too high, but it still keeps a clean line up because you can still keep that top line in. It's a lot more technical than it used to be, than, oh yeah, I've got a beard, that's on my face, so. I mean, the half guard's been a game changer and with haircuts as well. Do you know what I mean? Like getting in between yeah. the standard, but we used to just have one to four. How long have you been there? Uh, I think we worked out earlier, <laughs> nearly 16 years. No cordless skippers, no, just corded, super tapers, <laughs> wool peanuts. No Instagram, <laughs> it's true, yeah. Just Bebo and MySpace. With this, we're gonna keep it quite square to the jawline as well. So I've got to work on these areas here to keep that square on both sides. Sometimes I work behind the head so you can see exactly which way the beard's growing. So keep it straight down in front of you. Or obviously as well, you can come from the side here. I've always got a comb in my other hand just in case you need it to keep pulling the beard down to help you get that shape. This is the Uppercut Deluxe Wide Tooth Comb. Why do you use a wide tooth comb? It's easier to get through the beard where it's so dense. With like a cutting comb, especially the finer end, it's just going to snag. I don't think it'd be as comfortable for the client as well. Yeah. But what I'm going to do now is flick it to a half on my clippers. I'm going to now aim to take off all the ones that are like like, woo, I'm here. Do you know what I mean? Like, gonna take all those out so they sit a lot flatter to the face. When you look at that, the different angles, you know, I want that to be smooth, that and that. Need a steady hand for this as well. So I'm gonna do like a one and a half over this, but down with it. Again, bringing down the weight and any stragglers that stick out. This is just like a light trim on it, really. I don't want to go too short on it because it will look odd with the rest of the beard. I sometimes, well, I sometimes use the fingers like as a pivot action to sort of help balance the clippers as well to give it a bit more strength. So back in the detail, I'm gonna refine the edge of the, the beard, just following where it's come down from before. I've just got to focus on taking out this bulk underneath Obviously stretching the skin helps quite a lot as well. How long have you had a beard for now though, actually? Like really? 10 years. Do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon. No clean shave in 10 years? Once. Once. Just gonna use the corner of the trimmer here. Just gonna edge the top of that there, ever so slightly. So now I'm gonna go around again and take out any more excess ones that are sticking out, ones that I'm not that happy with. Yeah. yeah. I quite often do this like, towards like the second part of the shape on it, so 
I can keep it as sturdy and straight as possible. Now I'm just going to fall underneath the neck to give that super clean finish. It's going to fade back in from the haircut back to the beard fade. I'm just going to line the top of the beard up with some clear shave gel. Last of all, I'm going to use a bit of the beard balm to condition it and to soften up the beard. And I'll comb through that as well. His wife touched his face. Do you do that again? Nah, good. You sure? Are you having a good time, mate? Love it. Out. <laughs>